To truly grasp the essence of Emperor Trajan, we must journey back in time to the Roman Empire at its zenith. Born in 53 AD in what is now Spain, Marcus Ulpius Trajanus is not your typical Roman aristocrat. He's the first Roman emperor born outside Italy, a fact that will leave its mark on his rule. Trajan enters the army young and ambitious. After years of military campaigns and political manoeuvring, he becomes a consul and a general, earning the respect of both the Senate and the people. His true glory arrives in 98 AD when he ascends to the throne of Rome. His rise to power is peaceful, devoid of bloodshed or intrigue, a rarity in the Roman political landscape. Trajan is a ruler, marked by pragmatism and attention to detail. He's not just a military man, but also an administrator who understands the importance of a stable economy and good governance. He initiates ambitious construction projects like Trajan's markets and Trajan's column in Rome, which stand to this day as symbols of Roman architecture and engineering. While Trajan focuses on strengthening Rome from within, he also turns his eyes to the empire's borders. He's a military strategist with grand ambitions. Trajan is not a man to settle for less. He aims to expand the Roman Empire to its historical boundaries and even beyond. He is a symbol of how one individual can change the course of history by combining military prowess with administrative acumen. His reign is epical, not just for Rome but for the entire ancient world. Trajan is a military strategist who wants to see the Roman Empire not just powerful but stable and united under one flag. As Trajan sets his sights on expansion, the province of Dacia, located in what is now modern-day Romania, becomes his first target. The Dacians, led by their formidable king Decebalus, had been a thorn in Rome's side for years. Previous emperors had tried and failed to subdue them, but Trajan is not a man to back down from a challenge. In 101 AD, he launches the First Dacian War. The Roman legions march into Dacia with a meticulously planned military strategy. Trajan himself oversees the construction of a massive bridge over the Danube River, a feat of engineering that astonishes even the most seasoned Roman architects. The bridge is known as Trajan's Bridge, and it connected the present-day territory of Serbia and Romania. Unfortunately, there are only remnants of the foundations of the bridge today. The bridge not only serves as a supply line, but also stands as a symbol of Roman ingenuity and power. The war is brutal, but Trajan's military genius shines through. After a series of sieges and battles, including the pivotal siege of Salamisegatusa, the Dacian capital falls. Decibelus escapes, but not for long. In 106 AD, Trajan launches the Second Dacian War. This time there's no escape for Decebalus. He takes his own life, choosing death over capture. Dacia becomes a Roman province, its gold mines now filling the Roman coffers. But Trajan's ambitions don't stop at Dacia. He turns his gaze eastward towards the Parthian Empire. The Parthians have long been rivals of Rome, their empire stretching from modern-day Iran into parts of the Middle East. In 113 AD, Trajan embarks on a new campaign, this time to conquer Parthia. He captures the cities of Babylon and Seleucia and even takes the Parthian capital of Ctesiphon. For a moment, it seems as if Trajan will accomplish what no Roman emperor has done before, bringing the entire known world under Roman rule. However, the Parthian campaign starts to unravel. Supply lines stretch thin, and revolts break out in the newly conquered territories. Trajan, ever the pragmatist, realises the limits of Roman power. He installs a puppet ruler in Parthia and begins the journey back to Rome, his health deteriorating along the way. Trajan returns to Rome, but his health is compromised and his time as emperor is limited. Nevertheless, he continues to strive to improve the lives of the Romans. He invests in public buildings, roads and aqueducts. Trajan also establishes alimentary programs that assist the poor children of Rome. His reign is an era of prosperity and growth, which will later be called the Optimum Principum, the time of the best princes. 
Despite his military successes, Trajan remains humble and revered by his subjects. He is known for his fairness and care for the people. His legacy is enduring and inspiring. Trajan is beloved by both the people and the Senate, a rarity in Roman history. Trajan's death in 117 AD is a somber moment for the Roman Empire. He dies far from Rome in the city of Selinus in Anatolia, present-day Turkey. His body is transported back to Rome and is buried beneath the base of Trajan's column, one of his most majestic construction projects. Trajan is succeeded by his adoptive son Hadrian, who continues some of Trajan's policies and construction projects. However, Hadrian is more inclined towards peace and stability than conquest. Trajan remains in history as one of the greatest Roman emperors. His achievements in military affairs, administration and public works set a standard for all who follow him. He is a symbol of strength, wisdom and humanity that continues to inspire people today. This concludes the story of Trajan, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos about the greatest rulers. Please like the video, it costs you nothing, but means a lot to us. Thank you for the support. See you in the next video. And until then, stay curious.